Hello my warriors, how is it going? Welcome to another episode of the build of the week. So a lot of you requested something different from brawling and therefore I'm taking the Cicada 3F which is a very great skirmish mech. In this build today I'm showing you the perfect balance between range, speed and firepower with two large pulse lasers and a medium mech that is running 122 kph. So as always I've prepared two games for you today and after the two games there will be the announcement for a giveaway but before we do that we are getting to the Mac lab and then I will talk about a bit about the loadout. So here we have the Cicada 3F L. L is for loyalty and I got this one because I spent money in 2015 on that game and therefore it was gifted to me by PGI. But you can buy this one as well for Siebels or MC if you want. As you can see 7 million it's quite a lot but you get all the double heat sinks and the endo steel and ferro fibers with it. You don't need to upgrade those. This is uh, yeah, a thing you should keep in mind when you want to buy this. Um, let's get back to that one here. Uh, as you can see, the Cicada is a very compact mech. It has a very compact design. It has no arms that are sticking out, only these little pads here that are covering a bit of the side torso. Not a crazy amount, but still, it's, it's okay. And as you can see, I've put my two large pulse lasers into the right torso. So when we go over to the mech lab, you see why. Because the left side is now completely empty. And when I'm getting critted on that side, it's not a big deal. So the left side is only for shielding. So I put all of my stuff into the right torso. Also a double heat sink for crit padding. And of course two jump jets because this cicada is able to jump and you should use that. That makes it really maneuverable. I've got an XL engine 280, which is not that big. But I think it's pretty okay because it is still uh, it's delivering a speed of 122 kph with all the speed tweak and mastery, and that is quite decent, especially since the large pulse lasers have a range of about 365 meters. With all the modules and stuff, it is about has a nominal, nominal fighting distance of about 400 meters. So take that into account. You don't need a crazy speed to get close. You can fight at medium distance, and then 122 is quite okay. Speaking of modules, I've got radar deprivation, I've got large pulse laser range and cooldown, of course, because these are the only two weapons I have. And I've got target info gathering, because I like to target weak spots with that. The large pulses, they have a very short laser duration and you can wreck components with it very easily if you find them, if you find the weak spots. And that's it for the build. It's time to hit the battlefield. So here we are in HPG Manifold and we are playing Domination. And as I said before, the Cicada 3F is a very mobile mech. You have the jump jets, you have a decent speed and on top of that you have a decent range. So the perfect role for that is a flanking mech. You can get yourself to a good position, you can get yourself some cover and then you can shoot from there with a very decent range. As you can see, 400 okay. meters is the nominal fighting distance, but I think it's still okay if you fire at about 600, because then you are dealing at least 10 damage, or even more if the enemy gets closer. Another great thing about the build is that it doesn't generate that much heat. You have the 12 heat sinks, two external, 10 from the engine, and you only have two large pulse lasers. That is quite enough. If you really want, you could strip some arm armor to get one more heat sink into that, but I think this one is pretty mm -hmm. fine as it is. Okay. I like to have some armor on my arms to shield, and when I get into a tight spot, then I can just toss a twist and try to run. Just wiggle the torso a bit and then I'm fine. By the way, what I'm doing here is I pop a UAV and I'm using it kind of a lizard tail. So the enemy is now distracted by trying to shoot that UAV down and I could run into safety. Kind of safety, because I face a timber wolf, but he is distracted and therefore I'm just crippling his components. I just wanted to lag him so that my team had an easy kill on him. Now he couldn't run anymore and he was taken down very fast. And I had no need to go any closer. I had a sweet spot at about 300 meters and I was fine. I drew no attention at all from the Timberwolf and that is the big upside of that build. It is a fast moving medium mech with a decent range. So keep that in mind. Use the range of your large pulses, there is no need for a close fight. So what I'm doing here is I tried to fight the Centurion and I saw that his leg is damaged. Therefore I just went for it again just to cripple him so that he couldn't run anymore. And what I'm doing now is I break line of sight from him so that he had to focus one of my teammates. Uh, this is by the way a good strategy when you are playing medium or light max. Just get out of the fight for a second so that the enemy gets distracted by somebody else and then you are safe to go in again. 
We have a black track over here and I try to use that ramp as a piece of cover. As I said before, I've got all my weapons in the right side. I don't have to expose myself that much. And we also got jump jets to actually get a good jump shot on him. Problem is that I was blocked and therefore I couldn't fly completely over the gap here. And I fell down and got a bit of leg damage. But it's not a big deal. We go over to that timber wolf and try to shoot him even more. Problem is that I was a bit too cocky and now the team wolf is focusing me because I am the first mech he saw. And therefore I'm just going back to cover again, he is focusing one of my teammates and I am safe to fire back at him again. Yeah, again, this tactic is so important if you are playing light mechs or the lighter mediums. Just have a good overview what is going around you. Have a constant look at the minimap and yeah, be aware of what your team is doing. Be aware if they are pushing or if they are retreating, if you should get some cover or if it is safe to go out again. That is very important. I got a casual kill on the commando here. His side trousers was very open. But again, the target info gathering come in very handy here. So there are only two targets left, one of them is a linebacker, but it's fine since I got a lot of backup from my team and it is one of the last targets, therefore I just went in for a brawl and I was very lucky that he was killed from behind here. That was really good support from above. Yeah, overall I really like this mech. It is fast, it is mobile, it has a decent range and it is tanky. It has really great hitboxes, so your side torsos, they are very small compared to other mechs and you have these little pads as your shields on the left and right side. That is really, really good. As you can see, my legs are a bit damaged, but I made it to the end game. So, this time I dealt 643 damage, got two kills, nine assists and destroyed six components. Let's get to the next game before we do the giveaway. So we are playing Grimplexus, we are playing Conquest and we are very far into the game. But that is because I tried to be useful and I went capping. But the good thing about it is that I went for Epsilon and now I am in the flanks of the enemy team. And therefore I'm trying to harass them a bit and fire from medium distance. I've got myself a good piece of cover around here and I'm just trying again to get into their flanks just to distract them, just to draw their attention from the main force. Problem is that I found their assault mechs and I had to turn around immediately. There was no point fighting them because they have a lot of firepower. This one over here is another story. He has an open center, uh, is taken down already. And I saw that the smaller was also pretty damaged when his side torso fell off. His center torso is very open now and I just went in and got the kill. That is really, really good. As you can see, it's dealing a lot of damage, a lot of pinpoint damage actually. And you have that target info gathering module that shows the weak spots so that you can easily finish max off. Problem here is that I got a lot of damage to the legs and now I have to be a bit careful. I don't have to expose myself that much, but it's fine because the mounts of the weapons, they are pretty high and my legs are safe if I stay in cover. I was very confident at that point because there was a lot of confusion going on on the battlefield. We've got an assault mech and another heavy on the right and I am also targeted with missiles. I was pushed back a bit, but it's fine. I could go in again and as you can see I'm just exposing my upper torso. So when I'm firing from that spot my legs are completely in cover and they are not that in danger. But since I got a lot of long range fire from the other side, I decided to go into their flanks. There was no point just staying there and being shot at, I just had to move and change my position. I've got a king crab with a crit center torso and I tried to get to him. I got a good shot, but he was taken down by missiles. No problem at all, I'm just going to harass the enemy now. There is a Marauder and a Kodiak who are focusing my teammates and my job is to turn the faces around so that my team can push. I just want to harass them a bit and I want to go back to cover as soon as they are fighting me back. The Kodiak however is completely ignoring me and I got some very easy and safe shots into his back. That opened up his center torso very much and he was brought down very easily. So it's time to get back to the Marauder again. The good thing is that he is completely ignoring me because he is so focused on my team. And therefore I just went for his legs, not only for crippling him, but I tried to get off an ammo explosion because a lot of players are storing their ammo in the feet. And if I destroy one of their legs, then there's a good chance of an ammo explosion wrecking his side torso. Problem is that there are two shadow cats and they found me and now I had to fight them. And again, that shadow cat 
is a bit focused on the other side of the battlefield and I went behind him. He had no idea that there was a deadly cicada at his back and when he turned around it was just too late and I got a very easy kill on him. So I would say that my flanking maneuver totally worked out. There is only one enemy left and I am fast forwarding a bit so that we get to see the last kill as well. So the last guy is a raven and he was totally unaware of me advancing to him and I really got some good shots in his back. Problem is that my legs are open and he has large lasers. So what I'm trying to do here is I try to run in a very erratic pattern, constantly moving forward and backward and forward and up and down again so that he is not able to target my legs that much. His lasers are spreading the damage a lot and yeah. At some point he would just run hot and then he couldn't fight back anymore. And that is the basic idea behind that. You try to dodge as many shots as possible and then you fight back with your DPS oriented build while the enemy has some really hot laser build or you know what I mean. Big alpha strikes, if you can dodge them it is, it is very good. So then you have the upper hand. Problem is that the Raven is faster than the Cicada, usually in that build, but we got a good shot from Tudis over there. Yeah, that was a very decent round. I had a lot of fun, especially in that one. And let's have a look at the end screen to see how much damage we dealt on this one. So this time 787 damage, 2 kills, 8 assists. I've got a lot of spotting assists here and 6 components destroyed. Yeah, that is the Cicada 3F in the large pulse laser build. Let's go over and do the giveaway. Time to pick a winner and I'm changing my YouTube random comment picker because this one is filtering out all the duplicates. So this one here, YouTube, we are retrieving all the comments where you're filtering out the duplicate names because I want an even chance for every one of you. But before we are picking a random winner for the Mac pack, let me just go over here and show we that Patreon page because all of you that are donating money to me, that are patrons and that are supporting the channel, you all make this possible. And um, yeah, maybe you wanna consider becoming a patron as well. We are very close to the $100 goal in which I will prepare a monthly bonus video for you with the build of the month that is brought to you from the community. So any build, really any build you suggest I would play in a monthly build that could be anything you want. And uh, also, if you become a patron, you get bonus stuff like videos, you get access to my private Discord channel and stuff. And um, all the bonus videos I'm putting out constantly now, maybe two or three a month, and they are available for all the patrons, no matter which pledging level. So again, if you want to support me on that level here, then feel free to go over to patreon.com slash metal and become a patron. But now let's get back to that YouTube random comment picker here and pick a lucky winner of a $20 Mac pack or a mastery pack worth of $23. So all I need to do is go over here, press the start button and then we have a lucky winner. There are names flying and it kind of feels like opening a supply cache. And the lucky winner is Static Black. Static Black, congratulations, man. You just won a $20 Mac pack or a mastery pack of uh, worth up to $23. All you need to do is you need to send me a private message with your email and you need to tell me which mastery pack or which Mac pack you want so that I can send you the gift code via email. And all of you who are leaving a comment on that video here are enlisted for the next giveaway in two weeks when the next build of the week comes out. So I think next year I'm going back to my usual schedule doing the build of the weeks, actually weekly. Uh, but for now, let's, let's take it slow for the end of the year. Anyway, that was your build of the week. Hope you liked it. As always, don't forget to leave a rating if you did. And if you want to become a patron, maybe you want to consider it. And I hope to see you on the battlefield, everybody. Goodbye.